Rendering, for those of you who are new to 3D, is when you take all of the information that you've applied to your model, from the lights, to the textures, to the materials, to the surface, to the shadows, to everything. And then Cinema 4D takes all that stuff, puts it in the oven, and gives you a picture like this. So rendering is just simply taking all your settings and giving you a final animation or a final still image. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the render settings. All right, so we're gonna do a two part on this one. We'll talk about the basic stuff first by going to this little icon with the gear. And we'll talk about some of the more advanced settings in the next lesson. Now, the first thing you wanna choose, of course, is, well, the size that you want to render. So as you can see here, I have my width and height set to 1024 by 768. I can go here and choose the unit of measure. So if I'm gonna to go to print, I might wanna choose inches. If I'm gonna to go to the web, I might wanna choose pixels and other units here. If I decide to adjust these numbers, I can choose to lock this ratio. So when I change one of these numbers, the other one will stay in proportion. So no matter what I do, the width or the height, they will both remain in proportion. Deselect that so that you can change the width and height independently. I can also choose my resolution. Once again, this will depend on where you're going. So if you're going to the web, 72 is gonna be perfect. If you're going to print, you might wanna to go to 300 or even more. So talk to your art director or whoever's in charge of your production department to find out what resolution they'd like you to send this file if you're going to send this to someone. I can also choose here my render region, All right? So I can go ahead and change my render region here. I'll go ahead and turn that off. I can change my film aspect ratios here, my pixel aspects, and my frame rate if I'm doing animation. So if you're doing video or film, you can change this from 25 to 28 to 30 or whatever the frame rate is gonna be. If you're doing things for the web, you might wanna go as low as 12 frames per second or even 15. I can change the range that I'm gonna render if I'm doing an animation. That means, let's say I have 500 frames and I only wanna render from 120 to 400. So I can enter that here. I can either manually type it or I can go ahead and use this little slider here. As you see here, I chose manual. I can also choose the current frame that I'm on, all frames, or my preview range. Now, as you see here, I have save selected, which of course is important because I wanna save this file. And I can choose where I'm gonna save it by clicking here. I can choose the format, and this is really important as well. So once again, make sure you talk to your producer or whoever to find out whether they want you to send it as a JPEG, BMP, body paint, PNG, Targa, which I use for texturing a lot, TIFFs, movie files, and more. I can choose the depth. This is my bit depth. So eight bits per channel, all the way to 32. And what this simply will do is give you more uh, colors inside of your render so that you'll have less banding, which is like when you can see like when you have a red gradient going into a different color, if you have a low bit rate sometimes, you'll see that banding as the colors change as opposed to a nice smooth transition. If I wanna change my color profile, I can do that here. Anti-aliasing is simply getting rid of the jaggies along the edges of your object. So if you have a circle that you wanna render or a sphere, instead of it being all stair-stepped and jaggy, it'd be nice and smooth. And I typically choose best when I'm ready to go to my final render. There are also other options I could choose by going to options. For example, rendering out transparencies, refractions, reflections, and shadows. So I can choose whether I want to have these things rendered. If you're going to do 3D, you might want to choose stereoscopic. And that's when you put the 3D glasses on so that from your left eye, you have like a red color and on the right eye, you have a green color. Or I could of course have those mixed up. But this is how you can render out stereoscopic stuff for 3D. You can also turn off or on the hair render, depending if you're gonna have that in your scene. So if you're not, just go ahead and turn that off because you can control all the rendering settings for that. Ambient inclusion, we'll talk about in the next lesson, as well as global illumination. These are two things that I use pretty much all the time to really give me some really, really nice and beautiful renders. And we'll also talk about some of the other effects that you can apply to your renders in the next lesson.